guys uh, I wanted to uh, introduce you to a new uh, state effect um, that I introduced in version 39 um, and I want to sort of give you a bit of a background to it so you can understand why it's there and what it does um, it all came about as a result of uh, this part of the Sydney Mini um, this is uh, Fing's two talking faces, this is Patrick, his star, and this is Bruno, uh, his reindeer. Um, and you can see they're pretty standard Coro faces, actually they're pretty damn good Coro faces. Um, but they have a, a number of uh, non-standard face elements like noses, you can see his eyes uh, have the ability to look left and right. Uh, he has these antlers which he likes to change the colour of, the hat and even the pom-pom on the end of the hat he likes to change colours of. And unfortunately with the faces effect that's not really made very easy because the faces effect is very much focused on uh, the, the background or the outline of the face which which he uses for the, for the skin colour and the mouth itself but doesn't really help him um, sequence these other elements. Now he's done it using the faces effect last year and it's possible but it's quite fiddly and, and not obvious. Um, also when it comes to something like uh, this tune to sign which is something else he's built and, and I've built something that's uh, very similar to it this is the one that I've got that's in progress um, and this will be not only a tune to sign you can see this is the decimal place digit there's the decimal place two digits I've also added these two boxes here which give me a colon um, so I can display a time as well um, so I, but I want I want this to be easy to sequence and it's not very easy to sequence you can obviously can go down to the node level and put colors onto it but it's quite an involved process and I wanted to see if I can make that a lot better so what we came up with is a new state effect so here are our models this is um, this is the equivalent of uh, Bruno's eyes um, and this is my uh, tune to sign uh, and this is a bog standard matrix and I'll show you how you could in theory use state effect on any control I'm not sure you would but you could so let, let's start with the easy one which is Bruno's eyes so there's this new property called states it's very similar to faces um, uh, the only thing that's different with it um, is that there is there's only two types single nodes and node ranges uh, so there's no matrix and unlike uh, the faces where the phenomes are listed here and you can only define things uh, here I give you basically the ability to go and create up to 40 different states and of course you can create multiple uh, states up here as well so you can uh, it, it's pretty much unlimited um, in terms of how many that you can have there and here uh, with the eyes he's created a state called EL which is eyes left and he's told me which nodes to light up, eyes right and eyes centre. Um, this one here is actually defined wink and blink. Um, and once again, he's specified here which nodes need to be lit up in order for that to, uh, to be displayed. Uh, he's also chosen to set defined colours. Um, I've done similar things with, with these two. Uh, so these, if I show you what they look like they're quite simple um, these are actually uh, a module so there's three LEDs but it's one pixel for each side um, and you can see it's a pretty straightforward custom model um, e even Rudolph's eyes to be honest aren't that exciting they're just um, the way he's drawn them there is to make them look in reality of course they don't have anywhere near as many uh, pixels there as, as that would indicate but it, it gives a good representation of what it looks like this one here is pretty much the same the only difference here is instead of uh, forcing custom colors I, I'm letting the colors be uh, derived from uh, the color properties when I use it so that's a slightly different one and this is a standard matrix it's 10 by 10 uh, and here I've also gone and defined a set of states um, I've defined a top left and a bottom right state so the top left highlights all of the pixels up here and the bottom right state highlights all the pixels down here and I want to show you how you can use that as well so let's get to it let's go on and create a, a simple sequence oh actually I meant to do this let's go and grab one I created earlier all right so let, let's start with Rudolph, because uh, sorry Bruno, because um, he's quite simple. 
and I'll start to run through some various things. So here's his eyes. Uh, this one, uh, where do you go? So in this particular instance, the way in which the, the state effect, which is this AB effect, uh, which you can see here, actually we won't start there, we'll go over further. We'll start with a more obvious one. Here it is. So here up in the timing track we have eyes left, comma, eyes center, comma, eyes right, comma, eyes center, comma, eyes left. And when we click on the effect here, you can see that's exactly what happens. His eyes move left and right. And the reason that happens is because down here we've chosen which state to display. We've nominated that we want to use a timing track. So it's going to pull the data from the timing track. And we've put it into iterate mode. And what iterate mode says is I want you to take this time interval, break it up into, in this case, five equal pieces because there's five elements here. And I want you to show the first part for a fifth of the time, then the second part and so forth. And it just iterates through those states during the time interval that it's been dropped. And so we can very quickly and easily um, do his eyes. Uh, this one here does exactly the same, except we've got blink and wink this time. And you can see it blinks and winks his eyes. Uh, you can, of course, also dictate the state. So I can say wink here, um, or I can say blink, uh, rather than using the timing track. Um, but using the timing tracks kind of neat because you can see it across the top here about what's being displayed. You could, can of course you have as many timing tracks as you like and you can like this one has you can have multiple states as well depending on what you want to do. When you have back here and the reason I come back to this one is because uh, here I've got several states but it only recognizes one of them. So EL1 and 1000, well, the only state that uh, Bruno's eyes knows is the EL state, and so it's only going to show the EL state. In this case, it's in default mode, so what it's trying to do is it's trying to show all three of these states, but because it only knows one of them, only one of the states is, is shown. Um, so it's, you're, you're able to have states for multiple different types of uh, elements in the one timing track if you want to. Uh, that's allowed. Okay, uh, let's let's have a quick look at the matrix because that's very very similar in terms of how I've set it up. Okay, so here's uh, top left, bottom right, top left, bottom right, top left, bottom right. Again, it's on iterate, and so it flips backwards and forwards between top left and bottom right. And so you can see these states have just, I've just nominated which pixels I want to include in each state, and, and so it does it. Now this is in graduate um, uh, color mode. What that means is that when it starts, so we'll restart it, it starts white because white is the first chosen color. And as, is a, um, as it progresses through it, it moves towards red. It's actually a little bit long at the moment. So, okay, now it's a lot shorter, and so it starts as white and it moves towards red. So it flicks backwards and forwards, moves from white to red. If I wanted to do white, then red, then green, that's what it will do. So that's the graduate color mode. Uh, there's also a cycle mode. Um, that only works if you've got multiple time intervals. We'll come back and show that a little bit later. And then there's an allocate. And under allocate, what it does is it allocates each mode a particular color. So top left was the first mode, so it makes it white. Bottom right was the second, so it makes it red. Um, if you look at um, this one here, and if you were to put it into allocate mode, oh, Actually, of course, that won't work because the colors are allocated. We'll come back and we'll show it on the numbers. All right. So we've covered um, these simple models. Let's talk about the, the, the numbers models. So the first one we've got here, back here, we've, we've got 
a single effect which is covering across multiple time intervals all with their own numbers and you can see what it's doing is it's in um, sorry put it in default mode that right put it in number mode so what it's doing is it's displaying each number for the time interval where that number happens to appear. Uh, because it's in number mode, it shows up with a 0, 0.0 because it's really expecting this to be a FM radio frequency, much like this one is. So 104.3, so it's it's shown up. The reason this number's blue is because we're allocating the colors. Uh, this one here uh, is using graduate, and so the color keeps on changing between white and red. And if we were on, uh, allocate it would of course allocate the digits in this case all the even digits will be red and all the odd digits white um, and the more colors you add in the more variability you'll get across the colors because each color is allocated to each of the numbers uh, here remember we had the eyes left and it was only recognizing the eyes left here um, it's recognizing the ones and one thousands but I should actually go back and talk in the layout about how these things are actually set up because the states on these are actually quite interesting so here's the states and there's actually a huge number of them as you can see and the way it works is um, states one through zero control the rightmost digit and you'll see that these have got colors allocated and so these will flick between blue and magenta the numbers 10 through here to 00, zero define the states on the second digit. The 100 through triple zero, not surprisingly, control the states on the third digit. And the 1000, and there's only the 1000 because this digit can only display a 1, exists there. If you had a full uh, seven segment digit, you'd obviously have 1000, 2000, and so on. Uh, the colon is also a special name and it represents obviously these two pixels here um, and the dot represents this pixel here. If you want to use a seven segment display you have to use these states because behind the scenes my effect will be looking for these states to work out how to draw on your seven segment display. You can wire it up however you like right um, you, you can just choose to, to wire the pixels up however is convenient you just have to fix these nodes up so that the nodes are appropriate but these state names have to be this way if you want to use a seven segment display if you're using something like uh, Bruno's eyes here uh, you can call these whatever you want to call them it's really not important as long as you use the same names when it gets to the uh, uh, the timing track it will work just fine so, so this will now make a little bit more sense about what's going on here. So when you do 104.3, I'm working out how to display it. When you get to this one here, you notice how it's displaying the state EL, which of course doesn't exist in this particular model, 1, which happens to be the rightmost 1, and 1000, which happens to be the leftmost 1. And so that's what it's displaying. So I hope that makes sense. Some other modes. So here we're defining a time and we're in countdown mode. And so what that means is, you know, in real time, this will count down from one minute, 30 seconds until the effect runs out. So you can have a, a countdown clock for your next song or something um, uh, like that. Um, again, this, this is where the cycle will start to you can start to see it. Well, you can't see it there, of course, but you can see it here. He says optimistically and then finds out that he's entirely wrong. <laughs> I'm not sure why that's not working. All right, we'll move on. Okay, so here we've got a countdown, but a countdown of a different type. This time we're counting down from a number. So once again, it counts in real time by seconds, uh, down from 15 to 0 in this case, 
or whenever the time runs out. I'm going to get this cycle to work. Oh, I know, I know why, I know why, I know why. We'll do cycle back here. Yes. So what it's doing, because as it hits each timing uh, mark, it changes color. Right, that's what the cycle does. I knew there was something the cycle did. Uh, let's keep going. So we did countdown. Um, eyes left, eyes right. Uh, here we've got just the list of numbers up to 10. Now hopefully you can work out what this is going to do. It's going to display 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When it gets to 10 it's not going to display 10. It's going to display a 1 inside the second digit because that's what this does. Right, so not surprising. And I think that's it. If you want to display an arbitrary number um, so let's say we want to display, I don't know, just the number 123, like we did back here. Right. So you notice that here, I've actually got this in countdown mode, which doesn't make a lot of sense. What I really want it to do is display 123. But to do that, I need to set it to that. And now you saw it displayed 123. If I want to display 124, it's 120 and four. One hundred twenty and five. And that's in default mode. One hundred twenty four twenty five. One hundred twenty and six. And so forth. Okay? And that's because it's in default mode, which means it tries to display all of these states and all of these states exist on the model, so it knows how to display them. When it gets to 127, there is no state called 127 on the model, so it doesn't know how to handle it. Um, but when I change this to uh, number state, um, now it's reading 100, 100, 100, and then it turns into 127. Why? Because in number state it tries to grab the first number, and that's what it displays. But you always get this point and this zero. So obviously that may not be what you want, but it is what you want if you're displaying an FM frequency. So I'm, I'm hoping that makes sense. Look, I, I don't think this is going to be wonderfully useful to lots and lots of people, but if you're building Coro faces like Bruno and, and Patrick here, or, or if you're building uh, these seven segment displays, or if you've just got some, some random need to be able to group certain pixels together, call them a, a state, and then do something with them like uh, uh, you know, turn them on or off, etc., um, this will do that for you. So I hope you find it useful. Thanks.